Justin, I want to ask you this. Uh, we're talking about training and uh, people leaving here and heading to greener pastures. Are we doing a very good job here in educating our people? Well, I, I would say yes. I mean, I think that the the region, the Caribbean region, always says we we are, I think we are doing a, a good job, but we but the job, but we are not being very effective at, at it. Even though we are training uh, persons, um, in fact, our enrollment is uh, education in the secondary enrollment is uh, very high. In fact, about 90% of our students uh, in the region uh, enrolled in secondary school, which is the, the third highest, the, which is the third highest in, in the world. You have the first world from North America and Europe, and in Caribbean and Latin America, we have the, uh, the third highest. So yes, we are doing a good job in terms of um, uh, the um, education. But what we are still d doing uh, wrong is that our, we are training persons for the wrong reasons. Okay, we are still training persons for migration. And the majority of our training is for migration, is to send people abroad, and that should be the wrong. That should not be a reason. What we should do is we should tra train people so that they would remain in the region to fill potential jobs. Yes, here. yes. That's but do we do we know what? our needs will be. Have we done that level of strategic planning to sort of determine what our workforce requirements are going to be? Right, right. And sadly... Uh, the no, answer is no. No, no, we have not done Because what we do, for example, we um, I'm involved, I think, with uh, uh, we do a lot of uh, um, uh, labor market needs analysis through the region, employee skills demand survey, and um, ourselves, our company, with, with addition to um, a couple of the international consultancy, uh, PM, a PM out of Denmark, and a couple of comp uh, Italian companies. We do a lot of these labor market surveys. And, what, and we recently did one, as I said, we, we did the first labor market needs analysis for the government of St. Lucia. And um, this was the first one that was uh, done in the history of the, uh, of the OECS. In fact, no country, uh, so to, to determine what did the requirement of your of your labor of your labor force, it is required that you do an employer skill uh, a an employer a a labor market needs assessment, and that has not been done in Grenada as yet. So no, so so we do not know scientifically what our 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 employment de demands are. We do not know that. We 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 made uh, educated guesses, but until a labor a labor uh, a demand survey is done we will be able to uh, know. I think that we recently completed uh, an employer skills demand survey for an Antigua. And so, you know, so the so we are in the process of, of, do, of doing these and surveys, yes. You know, your last answer here uh, makes me a little bit reluctant to ask my next question because the, the question is, is the Caribbean benefiting from the education of its citizens? And uh, I guess in, in the sort of sidewise way you just answered that. Uh, yeah, yes. You know, because as I said, it, we are not benefiting. Okay, for, we, we educate people. We educate lots and lots of persons. But uh, what we are, are, are failing to do is that we are educating them. We need to educate them for specific reasons. Okay, we need to educate, for example, what makes the Caribbean great, uh, or any nation, any region great, is the involvement of your citizens in in training them in technology. And what we see, George, in the Caribbean, we are f um, failing because in the Caribbean, in the Latin America and region, um, where all the jobs are, they, uh, you know, what makes change in, 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 your, in your country is investment in technology, science and, and, and technology. And in the region here, what we've seen is that only 7% of all our students uh, study are uh, uh, enrolled in, uh, in science and te technology, only 7%, and 93% of those, uh, when they leave, uh, migrate to North America. All right. Now, would you suggest, then, that a focus on skills education be better for schools in, in Grenada than traditional education the way we have come to know before you answer that let me uh, sneak a call in here good morning you're on the morning, air good morning brother george how are you doing pretty good sir i'm i'm glad to hear 
talk about technical education. But I'd like to make an observation there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Grenada, as long as we have academics in charge of technical education, technical education is going nowhere. What we have, we have academics in charge of technical education. Two, the gentleman is talking about young people not entering the technical skills because they are not oriented into that. There is no orientation from, from one and from two. We have to go to the schools and talk to the students very early. Let them know what are the possibilities out there in technical areas, what are the requirements for entering into these fields, and the prospects for people who are qualified in these areas. And I've been there, George. I've been there since 1972. And as long as we have academics in charge, the response will be very poor. Sir, uh, sir uh, don't go. I want you to stay right there because I really want to hear Justin's comment on this. You understand what the matter is? Yes, yes. think as long as we have academics sir, at the helm, sir, you, know, you know, you, you are right. Because um, what we do, as I said, you know, we, uh, uh, we are a research company. So we do a lot of research, education research. We have done maybe you know maybe 250 of these research cases in uh, in Antigua. And what we've seen, uh, as the gentleman rightly said, that we we did a, a review of the of the education Antigua system in the region, and what we found was that over almost all of the let's say the permanent secretaries, the chief education officers, uh, these people in the that's responsible for TV have never been trained in TVET. Never been, or they not understand, they, 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 uh, they do not understand the, the, their nature of, uh, of um, TVET. So what we, what, what we also try to do is to educate the, these, um, the, uh, the authorities about the, about the importance of TVET. Because TVET is the fastest way for economic development in your country. It's the fastest way. It has been done over and over in many countries is the fastest way. Also, in many c countries in the world, for example, uh, Finland, TVET is all is integrated with with other subjects. You know, you know. Uh, in for example, if you if you if you uh, go to Finland, for example, and your your um your faucet is not working, then there would be no one. You, you, you when you look through the in the, the telephone directory. There will be no one. You, you cannot see anyone to, to that that can do it for you, because everyone c can do it. Everyone can fix a fix a bulb for fix a faucet, and that is what we're looking for in the in the region. Be TVET should should be more accessible and and, and more more known to to um, everyone. All right, caller. You have a question for me. For me. Any other question for me? Any question for me? <laughs> Do you have a question for this gentleman? Well, I, I just want, want the, the caller to um, do not uh, to uh, don't give up. Okay, it's still you know I start uh, still continue to agitate people. You know, tell them about TVET because TVET you know is is important for national development because it's it's the fastest and only way uh, through through skills training and technology that 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 any region can can develop. Caller? Yes, thank you, brother. Okay, man, take it easy. To the bosses. Pardon yes, me? Yeah, I've been trying to tell them for 20 years, but they're not here listening. <laughs> I understand, yes, yes. sir. I really I understand. understand. It would be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel, caller, about, uh, you know, the situation uh, regarding public or general perception of TVET? It's still very poor. And partly in our case, in Grenada, one of the reasons is that our people in Tibet are not eloquent, very eloquent, quite yes. often. Yes. So they'll have a little difficulty explaining. Well, for example, I am by training a machine. Okay. Now, I could explain to somebody why you need a certain tolerance on a shaft. Some of the people have difficulty doing that. And that is one of the reasons why they feel, well, okay, you've just an ordinary fella. But as I made mention some years ago, if you buy a car for $150,000 and you get a guy who failed to enter secondary school or dropped out in from two as a repair mechanic, you're stupid. 
because you're risking $100,000 yeah. in the hands of us. You need qualified people, people yeah. who have the understanding to do these technical jobs that are there now. Right. So my admonition to the gentleman is here is to impress upon the people in charge that they need from the one to start getting the young people to understand the value and importance of technical education and the training. Yes. Yes. Hold on, Corey, again, don't go. Let me ask both of you this question here. Have you encountered a situation uh, where public perception is that when you talk about vocational training, um, somehow it leaves that perception that you're talking about low-class jobs? Yes. yes. Is, that, yes. is that something you all have encountered? Yes, that is true. Yes, yes. I, I, I would say that, that, that the, it's, a sti it's the perception of stigma. There. The stigma, it has a very low stigma that when you're talking about vocation of skills, is for the person who didn't make it, the person who needed a second chance. The guy is not, he's not doing well in school, so let him learn a trade. Let him do a bit of carpentry. Let him do a bit of, you know, go out with, 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 with an uncle as a tailor. You know, we, 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 we pity these people. The, these tradition, this perception we have is that we pity them. However, in other parts of the um, region, in the part of the world, people are getting the first degree. Then being being trying applying learning to be a carpenter a, a, a plumber. In fact, I went to to, to Suriname, and I, we saw a guy from France doing his, his masters in 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 joinery. You see the, the architect, what this guy is building, and he has his first degree, he's, and he's doing his masters. So in, in fact, in the University of um, uh, um, Oslo, you can do a degree in plumbing. I mean, could you imagine someone? at the University of the West Indies. I'm trying to do a degree in, in plumbing or carpentry. I mean, people would, would, I, would I laugh at you. Yeah, the, the professors are not ready for that yet. Exactly. So, so we, if we do not change, George, and if we do not change uh, quickly, the, 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 the world would leave us behind. Because, because what, what uh, based on research, 80% of all the jobs in developing countries, I mean, I said 80% require a, a high level of technical and vocational education and training. That's why we have so much unemployment here. And let me make one comment there. One of the problems is that the technical education and training program, or the school and secondary schools, research is not part of the orientation. And that is keeping us back. Because there are a lot of little things that people do. We did things when I was there, when I was involved. My students had to do a project, a research project, to qualify. They had to pass that. And they were judged use of it, electrical people, friend like and other people come in and help your use. You know. So it was intended to get people ready for work. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, it was intended to get people ready for work. And research is sadly lacking in our community. Thank you very much, Cole. I appreciate your call. You're welcome, brother Josh. Thank okay. you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh boy, very interesting stuff you guys are talking about here. Yes. All right, I got a couple more for you, but I want to uh, um, actually let me get right to it. Education in the Caribbean and um, economic development. Generally, you're saying we're not on the right path right now. No, we we we're not not on the right path because, for example, there's a if we there's a guy called Ron Coast. I mean, in fact, he got the Nobel Prize in 1981, and he wrote a paper in 1921 about, it is called, research paper is called The Nature of the Firm. I mean, someone could, could Google that. And he did a lot of his calculation and based on, 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 on Adam Smith um, economic theory. He said that education, in order for education to be beneficial to you, education must be linked with technology. The age that you're living in. Right now, George, we are living in the technological mm -hmm. age. So all our education must be linked with, with technology. But what we, we're not seeing that in, in the region. We're trying, yes, but not to, to the extent as, as other parts of, of, of the um, world. All right. Lincoln, let me uh, take a little break here, pay some bills, and we'll come on back and continue this dialogue. One man went 